Good morning. We're still in uh, chapter 15. We're almost at the end of designing with the family editor. We're at uh, troubleshooting techniques. Now that you've created a basic component and explored some of the fundamental modeling techniques, let's look at some additional methods and troubleshooting you might experience working on a real project. Doing a visibility check, in the C15 desk project RVT file, which we got from the book's companion website, open the visibility graphics settings dialog box and expand the furniture category. Uncheck the box for the table subcategory and click OK. I always hit apply, but then hit OK to close the dialog box. You will notice that only the tabletops have been turned off in the drawing area. Open the visibility graphics uh, overrides dialog box again and uncheck the box for the furniture category. For the furniture category. Uncheck the box for the furniture category. You will see that the desks and even the table legs have been turned off in the view. Even though the nested table leg family was created with a generic model family template, it will behave according to the main category of the host family. And again, we assign, right? We assign those categories when we're creating the family, when we're creating the family. Let's go through the process and fix this problem. Go back to the C15 table like family and from the Create tab, click the Family Category and Parameters tool. Change the Family Category to Furniture and click OK. Well, first of all, we've got to get that back to, uh, to Visibility Graphics. Well, here's the... Uh, that's not the family. We have to actually open the family, right? We actually have to open Because this is a nested block, right? a nested family. If I was to edit this family, within that family is a leg family, right? Well, here's the, we have to actually edit this. I can, now I have to edit that family within the context of editing the table family. Now if I click on it, and I look over here, and I see family categories and parameters. Well, change the family category to furniture, and click OK. Now let me undo that for a second, if I can. And it was already, it says it was already uh, under that category, but that's OK. Let's just continue along. The family category must be changed to furniture to avoid confusion with object style subcategories. If you create a subcategory under generic models named tables and then reload the nested leg family in the table, there will be two separate subcategories named tables. Switch to the manage tab and then choose object styles. In the object styles dialog box, click the new button and name the new subcategory tables. Remember to use careful planning when naming subcategories within your customer family, custom families. As mentioned earlier in the chapter, inconsistency with subcategories can lead to problems with view templates, graphics, exporting, and printing. Well, for starters, this is a, um, a subcategory of furniture. 
Let's make sure that's uh you the name you supply is already in the use. Enter a unique name. Oh, that's right, this this project was finished. That's the that's the thing. This project was already finished. Um, so a lot of this stuff's already done for us, so let's just go through it. Um, remember to use careful planning. Right, we're doing that. In the drawing area, select the solid revolve in the properties palette, set the sub category parameter tables. All right, well, let me go back in and edit this leg again. Let me just make sure. See, now when I touch it, it says it's tables. Hold on. It's furniture. Furniture, tables. Now, this is where I should have done it. Go back into the object styles, manage, object styles, new. There is, see, there's already tables one. All right, let's see if this works. I hope it's already in there. All right, well, I'll just hold that thought. Well, see, there it is right there, tables. Okay, hold on. Select the revolve, and in the properties palette, set the subcategory parameter to tables. There already is tables. Save the family, and then click load into project. C14 table life, C15 table life. Yes, we'll give it a go. Save the family and then click the load into project button. First, reload the light family to the table family, and then reload the table family to the C15 desk project. You load into project, into the table family, it's in finished, and then load it, and then reload the table family into desk project. Okay. You will now notice in C15 desk project that the table legs are turned off along with the other tables, uh, other ones of the, of the tables. Let's take a look at that. View, visibility graphics, furniture, tables. Ah, well now the legs are gone too. Okay, good. When you are editing a nested family, you could reload the family directly into the project without reloading into the host family. We recommend working your way back through each family so that the original host family RFA file is maintained in your project content directory, the library. So yeah, you could have actually, instead of loading the leg back into the family, before you loaded the family back into the project, loading the leg into the desk table family and the table family into the project, desk project, you could have just loaded the leg into the desk project and it would have updated the table family. But that's not how they recommend doing it. They recommend step by step, loading into the table family and then load the table family back into the project directory, the other project file. Applying parametric arrays and family type parameters. For the final exercise, you will work with additional nested families, but you will learn how to apply a family type parameter and use parametric arrays. The steps in the following exercise must be carefully applied in the correct order or the flexibility in the family may be disrupted. More complex families are prone to errors if you build them quickly and without care. So take your time and review each step along the way. You will begin by loading two different chair families into the C15 table RFA family. Download the files shared dining hyphen one and shared dining hyphen two from the book's webpage. These modified families were originally downloaded from the RevitCity.com website. In the C15 table RFA file, let's just make sure we have everything that we need open. 
WTZA. All right, so we got we got the desk project, we got the table leg RFA fan. Let's close that. We've got uh, desk project again. What's just another view of it? We've got the C15 table RFA, which was empty, if you remember, and then we kept open the C15 table finished, if I remember correctly. Right, C15 table finished. All right, so we have the project open, the desk project, and we have the uh, table RFA. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna load these chairs, I believe, into this uh, table family. Um, okay, so from the table, and let's see if we can activate the from the table RFA, right? From the table RFA reference level. Right, so we got to load these first. So let me um, let me go into insert. It was a load family, and we should have shared dining one and shared dining two. I'm gonna select both of them, and they're upgrading, and they're in. I haven't put them in yet, but they're loaded into the family. They're loaded into this family as a nested family. If you not if you have not already located the two shared families, click the load family command in the ribbon. From the type selected, choose the shared dining one family. Place one share along the upper edge of the table. Ambiguous along the upper edge. Oh, well, they're already in. This is model model group array group one. Well, let's see here. Being this is already finished. And what let me see here, what does this one say? Array group two, array group one. So they're asking us to do the same thing. So I'm going to delete these chairs if I can. Delete this one, and delete this one, I'm going to delete this one, and I'm going to delete this one. Okay. Share dining one family, place one chair along the upper edge of the table. All right, so I'm going to go insert, um, oops, I'm going to go to architecture. Component, shared dining one, and place one chair along the upper edge of the table. Well, I'm I, I'm in the wrong. No, wait a minute, hold on. Uh, little component. Shared dining one. Upper edge of the table. That's about the upper edge. Remember to press the space bar, rotate, rotate the chair as needed. Well, it goes in this way. Exit the, the component command and select the chair you placed in the previous step in the label dimensions panel. Choose the create parameter button. So grab this and in the, uh, in the label dimensions panel which isn't selected, I would have to select, oh, there it is, I'm sorry. Choose the Create Parameter button. So we're gonna create one, add a parameter. Create a new parameter named Chair Type. Note that the parameter type is a family type, type of parameter, family type by default because we have the family selected. This kind of parameter will let you apply different families that are nested in the host family. Also, it is important that all nested families with which you intend to use a family type parameter must be of the same category. For example, one of the chairs originally downloaded from the RevitCity.com website was assigned to the family furniture systems category, whereas the other was in the furniture category. Therefore, the two nested families could not be assigned to the same family type parameter. With the chair still selected, click the Edit Type button in the Properties palette. Click the AFP button for the chair material parameter. And 
again, this is already uh, done for us. So I'll just assign this parameter to it. All right, so with chair still selected, uh, blah, 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 edit type button, go to the edit type button, and in the uh, material, is it accent material? Which, um, for the chair material parameter, click the AFP button, associate family parameter. Click the AFP button for the chair parameter material. Uh, chair material parameter. Create a new parameter called uh, named nested chair material. It's already done for us. Um, and then click OK to close the open dialog box. So let's assign this um, nested chair material. Oh, I can really just type it in, right? It's not letting me by default. Year nested share material. Come on, let me associate it with it. Oh, it's within the family. Uh, all right. Oh, well, then you just click OK. All right, well, it's not applied to it, but I created it. From the Modify tab in the ribbon, click the Align tool. Click the back reference plane and then click the center front back reference plane within the chair. So click the back reference plane. That's this one, back reference plane. And then the center front back reference plane within the chair. Is it labeled? Center front back reference plane. Click the pair block so I, to establish a constraint. So it's always going to be constrained that way. Okay. Add an align dimension from the right reference plane to the center reference of the chair. Set the value at one foot eight. So from the right reference plane. Make sure that's the only one I got. To the center reference of the chair. And set it to one foot eight. Well, I got to get it over to one foot eight first. One foot eight. And then uh, I clicked the padlock to lock it in place. Select a chair. And from the modify tab in the ribbon, click the array tool. With the linear option selected, in the options bar, choose the group and associate option and move to end radio button. Click once near the chair and then click a second time, two foot eight to the left. Once in the chair and two foot eight to the left. Press the enter key to accept the number of entities in the array, which is two. Use the align tool to constrain the array chair back to the reference plane. Add an align dimension and then lock the dimension. Similar to the previous steps, the plan view should look like the image I'm about to show you. So it should be equidistant, one foot eight. It doesn't look like it, but uh, it's going to be. So align this to the is it this one no that's not it it was 
back reference plane. Actually, it already is because we copied it over. So now, um, we get this one two foot eight. So we need another dimension, annotate a line dimension from here to the edge, and it's got to be one foot eight. So if we move this over. One foot eight. One foot eight, it's just like the other one, and then lock it in place. Select one of the array chairs, and you will see a line connecting the array objects displaying the number two. In the label dimensions panel, click the create parameter button, create a new parameter named chair array. Click OK to close any open dialog boxes. Okay, well. I'm not getting the, uh, well, it's already a model array group. It's a parameter. Does it have a, a parameter associated with it? Let me just take a look here for a second. parameter to this. So, hold on, hold on. I'm not getting the label that, um, let me see if I can edit it. Label, all right, there it is. I have to add, edit it. Add parameter, let's see here. And it's probably already done for us. Chair array, a parameter named chair array. And it's a family parameter. It's probably gonna say it's already, it's already defined. So let me just cancel. It says it's already defined. Cancel out of there. I will see if it's defined. We'll see. Um, open the family types dialog box in the form of the field for the chair array parameter. Type length uh, less than two foot divided by two foot. For metric length 600 divided by 600. So open the family types dialog box. And so the parameter, there it is. Chair array equals length minus two foot divided by two foot. All right, so that's already done for us. This will automatically increase or decrease the number of elements in the array based on the length of the table. Repeat steps one from 10 to place another parametric array along the front reference plane. When you get to step three, instead of choosing add parameter from the label dropdown list, you will simply choose the chair type parameter. And in step 10, you will choose the chair array parameter. Before you continue with the exercise, take a moment to open the family types dialog box and switch between type one and type two. Verify the chairs maintain alignment with the edges of the tabletop. When you select type two, there should be six chairs instead of four. Compare your results with the image shown in figure 15.50. Okay, it didn't add the chair, but then again, um, we haven't really done anything with it yet, hold on. Well, there's room for six, but there aren't six. Um, with type two still active, in the family type dialog box, Set the chair type parameters to chair dining room two. Chair type parameter. Chair dining two. That's already good. 
You should see all the nested shares. Change to the alternate share family. Well, it's already done. Save the family and reload it into the C15 desk project and choose the options to reload the family overriding any existing parameter values. If the table subcategory is still turned off in the view, you may notice that the shares appear, but not the tables. There is likely no realistic need to create another subcategory for shares, so open the visibility graphics overrides dialog box and turn on the table subcategory. You can experiment with adjusting the values of the table family, including creating new types with variations in materials. And we've done that. I'll see what we got. All right, so go back to visibility graphics settings. Uh, let's go to furniture, tables, apply. Okay. All right, so now the table came on, and we didn't get our uh, we didn't get all of our chairs. So let's go to our type two for a second and it didn't add any chairs it didn't add anything with the array let's see here default elevation nested chair it didn't array it chair array three let's see what happens when we mess around with this six well, isn't that interesting? By changing the number of chairs, we change the overall size of the table, so it's, it's directly proportional to that. Okay, well, on that note, I'm going to stop this video, and I'm going to uh, dissect this on my own time. But what I'd like you to do is do the same. I think we've come far enough in this chapter where uh, these chairs are going to have to go up some stairs and we're going to have to carry them up there. <laughs> so, um, we're going to be creating more families along the way and adjusting family properties. So, I'm not only concerned if, uh, if it didn't turn out exactly as the book uh, planned it to, but the bottom line is uh, we got to get started with a family. Before you start to create your own family components, take a moment to think about how you expect that component to behave uh, in your project. The role of a family editor is not just an environment to model geometry. It also determines how the content that you will create will behave in the project environment. Master it. Choosing the right templates is critical. You can convert from one family template to another, but this is not always the case. Why would you want to choose a door template rather than a generic model template? Create the framework for a family component. Reference planes, points, and lines are the bones of your component. Assign parameters to the skeleton and the geometry will follow along. Be sure to test the parameter and reference relationships before you start to create any solid model geometry. Master it. Why should you build assign parameters to and test the references first? Why not just model the geometry? Well, you can see right from there that if there's a hiccup, you're going to have to go back and you have to dissect it and test and flex and see uh, if it's indeed what you wanted to design in the first place. And why go through all the steps? Why go through all the steps? And the reason being is that every time you want to put in a table, you don't want to have to keep um, adding and, and, and deleting and, and trimming and extending and augmenting the family um, when you could set it in the beginning with those parameters um, that will drive the geometry as opposed to just modeling the geometry. Set in the, uh, the parameters that will that'll that'll drive the geometry and not the other way around. Or you're going to be driven by the model. So, understanding family modeling techniques. Although the family editor contains a wide assortment of modeling and editing tools, you do not always need to build everything in one file. You can use a number of techniques to reduce redundancy and manage complex geometry for a component family. Master it. When would you consider using the technique of nested families? Nesting families. How could this method improve the efficiency of a component family? Apply extended family 
my management techniques. Sometimes parametric behavior will depend on the parameters that directly control it, but often these parameters will be expressed as a relationship to something else. Master it. Why are formulas so important? Why not just create the parameters you need and then modify them as needed in the project environment? Well, we've seen that. Um, formulas will, will also drive the geometry um, and, and they're based on these reference points. Uh, it's the skeleton of your geometry. So speaking of skeletons, um, we got to get to the chapter 16 um, because uh, I'm getting old and uh, creating stairs and railings is going to be another uh, complex aspect of modeling techniques. Uh, and, and you've seen, I'm sure, in your life, many, many stairs. And I've tried building stairs myself and it's not very easy. I didn't do a very good job. I'm not a carpenter. But you'll see uh, software is uh, designed to be uh, an intuitive tool to help you um, get to the deliverable that you need to, to convey. So again, that might have been a bit rough around the edges, but um, there's more room at the table for, uh, for folks to chair whatever they want you you have the luxury of sharing anything you want right i'll share over here you share over there and maybe someday we'll share on uh the other side of the table sorry for the ambiguity <laughs>